Joe Biden now has a career in public office dating back over 44 years. That's close to double my age. Throughout that entire time, he's had the nickname Middle Class Joe and is often referred to himself as one of the poorest members of Congress. All my time in public life from since I've gotten involved, I've been referred to as middle class Joe. It's not always meant as a compliment. These days, he's definitely not the poorest member of Congress with multiple real estate holdings like a few in Delaware and living in lavish homes throughout the years, which we'll check out in this video. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, these do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Joe Biden comes from scrappy roots. He was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania to a father that suffered a series of financial setbacks. And for a short time there at least, Joe wasn't any different. According to the Wall Street Journal, the reason why Biden was so often at the bottom of the wealth ladder among his other colleagues in the Senate had a lot to do with his lifelong obsession for real estate. He wrote in his autobiography, Promises to Keep, even as a kid in high school, I'd been seduced by real estate. As a youngster in his 20s, Biden began buying up homes, especially ones outside of his budget, taking out multiple mortgages and receiving loans against life insurance policies. As he grew older, his net worth was often in the negatives and by 2007, he was ranked as the least wealthy senator in the US when his net worth was estimated to be less than $30,000. But today, the 77 year old presidential elect is far from middle class. According to a 2019 Forbes estimate, Biden and his wife Jill are now worth as much as $9 million, much of which was earned from $100,000 speaking fees and $8 million book deals that came pouring in after his vice presidency. About $4 million of his over Overall net worth is estimated to be wrapped up in his current real estate holdings, two homes that he owns in Delaware, and today I'm going to tell you not only about them, but a couple others he's lived in over the years too. How's it going guys and gals? It's Kara here for you with a brand new house tour. I noticed 95% of you watching aren't subscribed, so hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. We post a new video daily. Today we're going to be taking a look at the homes of presidential elect Joe Biden, and while we don't have a whole lot to share with you in terms of the current interiors of these homes, I I've still got all the details you could want along with some juicy gossip. So if you've ever wanted to know how Joe Biden lives by the end of this video, you will. As always, let me know what you think by following me on Instagram or dropping your thoughts in the comments down below. Now let's get into this video. Let's start with the Biden's main home, located in Wilmington, Delaware. The house is situated to overlook a man-made lake that was created by the wealthy members of the DuPont family. Local real estate agents called this area one of the most expensive in the state, and it's known as Chateau Country thanks in large part to a group of massive colonial estates that were built in the area also by the DuPont family. Joe and Jill first purchased the four acres of land that this home sits on back in 1996 for $350,000. Soon after, they built a 6,850 square foot home on the premises, which is now estimated to be worth somewhere in the $1 million to $2 million range. During his vice presidency, it was reported that Joe rented out the cottage located in the property to the Secret Service for $220 a month. I don't know how smart it is to make the people protecting you pay for the opportunity to do so, but one look at his bank account tells us it clearly worked out for him. A few years back when Joe's son Bo was valiantly fighting against brain cancer, Joe considered selling this home to help pay for the treatment, but he was discouraged from doing so by a pretty surprising source, President Barack Obama. President Obama offered to lend him the money instead. The Bidens are reportedly seen around town here a whole bunch, spending time at the local grocery store Jansen's Market, which is only a five minute drive from their home. They also attend the St. Joseph on the Brandywine Roman Catholic Church nearby. Before we move on to Biden's vacation home, I thought we'd take a quick look at Joe's former home located in the neighborhood of Greensville, Delaware, that recently came back to bite the president-elect a little bit. As you can see, the Trump family called this estate into question during the most recent election cycle, questioning how old middle class Joe could afford such a nice estate. But here's the thing, he doesn't own it, at least not anymore. Back in 1974, Joe was a very young senator and a recent widower when he purchased this former DuPont mansion for $185,000. At the time, he nicknamed the home The Station and it became his campaign headquarters for his first presidential run in 1988. Joe spent over two decades renovating the space and by the end, the home featured five bedrooms, 2.5 baths, and over 10,000 square feet of living space. 
After staying here for close to 20 years, Joe sold this home back in 1996 for $1.2 million, a substantial gain over what he paid for it. Today, estimates suggest that the home is worth as much as $1.7 million. Look, when you're a politician, sometimes you just need to get away from it all. Next up is a look at Joe's vacation home, located in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. In the summer of 2017, Joe is coming off of eight years as the vice commander in chief, and he must have been looking for a little R&R because he and his wife Jill settled on this home on the Delaware shore, scooping it up for 2.7 million. This beautiful 4,786 square foot beach house overlooks Cape Hennelepin State Park and is just a couple blocks from the beach. It features three stories, six bedrooms, 5.5 baths, expansive porches, views of the Atlantic Ocean, and a backyard built for entertaining, including an outdoor kitchen, barbecue, and fireplace to impress all those Washington socialites that Joe is close with. After buying this home, Joe said in a statement, Throughout our careers, Jill and I have dreamed of being able to buy a place at the beach at home where we can bring the whole family. We feel very lucky that we're now able to make that happen and are looking forward to spending time with our family in the place that matters most to us in the world. For those of you paying attention, 2017 is the same year that Biden's net worth catapulted upwards thanks to the speaking arrangements and book deals. So in a very real way, I think this home was a gift from Joe to Joe. When you're running for the most public office in all the land, people are going to dig up a whole lot about your past. One of the homes that middle class Joe was associated with owning was this rental home located in McLean, Virginia. In actuality, the Bidens only rented this home between 2017 and 2019, paying $20,000 per month for a home that's estimated to be worth somewhere in the $4 million range after moving out of the vice presidential residence at the Naval Observatory at the end of his term. This upscale neighborhood in Virginia is practically practically a who's who of senators, Supreme Court justices, and Washington diplomats. While staying here, Joe lived in a Georgian style house which he rented from venture capitalist Mark Ean, who previously purchased the home from Alexander Hagg, the Secretary of State during the Reagan administration. Sprawled out at over 12,000 square feet, this five bedroom beauty has its own gym, sauna, floor to ceiling windows, and a driveway that's big enough for nearly 20 cars. Despite how nice it is, in 2019 preparation for his upcoming presidential bid, Joe and his wife moved out of this home to focus on the campaign. All right guys, I think we'll bring this house tour to an end right there. What did you guys think about Joe Biden's homes? Which one of his many different paths would you prefer to stay at? Give me his beach house in Delaware and I'd be good to go. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye. Hard as it is to believe, former United States President Barack Obama hasn't called the White House home for seven years now. And while moving out of one of the most famous residences in the planet was definitely difficult, at least Barack and his family had a series of gorgeous homes to fall back on. Barack cut his political teeth in the city of his wife, Michelle's birth, Chicago, Illinois. As he climbed up the ranks on his path towards becoming Illinois state senator in 2000, Barack and Michelle bought a home on Chicago's south side side in the neighborhood of Kenwood for $1.65 million. Roughly 6,400 square feet in size, this home had undergone a high-end renovation just a handful of years before the Obamas purchased it, including the addition of Chinese wash basins, mahogany bookcases, and a granite kitchen floor. Since moving into this property some 20 years ago, Barack and his family have kept a low profile in terms of showing off the interior of this space probably because they haven't spent all that much time here since Barack's move to the White House in 2008. At the time of its purchase, however, this was an ideal home for a now senator, and it remains such a beautiful spot that the Obamas have kept it in their portfolio while spending the vast majority of their time living only a few minutes away from their former address at the White House. Situated in the exclusive neighborhood of Kalorama in Washington, D.C., the Obama family made the decision to buy this home after spending a few months leasing it following Barack's exit from office. They decided to make this their permanent home so that their youngest daughter, Sasha, would be able to complete her high school education in Washington without having to change schools. She's since managed to earn her diploma, but the family has actually decided to stick around anyways. 
That might have something to do with the fact that the property is a gorgeous 8,200 square foot Tudor style mansion with nine bedrooms that sits on a quarter acre of land. Inside the estate, you'll discover marble floors all throughout that provides a luxurious sense from the very moment you first enter the place. This home is also notable for containing not one, but two kitchens. One is an Eden with stainless steel appliances, tall white cabinets, as well as marble countertops to complement the flooring. The second is quite a bit smaller, more like a galley kitchen, and is probably used most when someone in the family needs a quick fix as opposed to a full course meal. Walking through a nearby Gothic style doorway will lead you directly into the home's gorgeous dining room, where Barack and Michelle have no doubt entered Contained some of the biggest names in the entire world over the past few years. Speaking of entertaining, there's also numerous other spaces for the family to kick back and relax, either on their own or with company, like inside of this epic formal living room. And if they're looking for something a little more down to earth, they can always move things into the nearby family room with its floor to ceiling windows that look out towards the property's backyard. Meanwhile, upstairs, you'll find the home's bedroom wing, including a master suite with more than enough space for an epic king-sized bed as well as eight for their bedrooms, two of which belong to Obama's daughters, Sasha and Malia. Sasha is said to be lucky enough to have her very own suite in the home, complete with a separate living area. What's more, Sasha reportedly designed the space herself, at least that's what Michelle once told Ellen back in 2018. Since Sasha got so lucky with her massive bedroom, that meant Barack had to cut back a bit on his office, which provides all the necessary equipment he might need. But it is maybe just a little light on square footage. Last but not least, the home also includes a totally finished basement while providing the Obama family with a lush green space out back that provides plenty of room for not only the kids, but the family pets as well. Of course, as nice as the Obama's primary home is, it's not like they're going to spend all of their time living out of Washington. Sometimes they need a break. And when they do, they head to Martha's Vineyard. In June 2017, Barack Obama and his family finalized the purchase of an $11.75 million waterfront home situated on nearly 30 acres of Martha's Vineyard, a very affluent island located just south of Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Designed by Taylor Lombardo Architects, this summer home was first built in 2001, and the Obamas fell in love with the location while visiting it for their annual getaway from the White House. Having developed such a passion for the place, once Barack had a bit of free time on his hands, he decided to put down some roots in the very same gorgeous villa his family used to rent every summer by purchasing the property. The home had been on the market since 2015 when it was originally listed for $22.5 million. Barack would only wind up spending about half of that when he made it his own two years later. For all that money, he and his family got an expansive 6,892 square foot house fronting the beautiful Edgar Town Great Pond while also providing views of the Atlantic Ocean. Inside the home boasts seven bedrooms, eight and a half baths, as well as several stone fireplaces. Much like their home in Washington, this property has been designed with entertaining in mind which means there's also an expansive kitchen as well as a dining room that provides one of a kind views of the nearby water. When it comes time for relaxation, Barack's family can unwind in the family room that offers plenty of space, as well as the architectural details that give the home plenty of character. Upstairs, the property features an elegant master suite complete with a fireplace, dressing room, and ensuite bathroom that provides views across the bay. There's also a stunning gallery living space upstairs with windows windows located on three sides to allow for plenty of natural light. Outside on the surrounding property, you'll discover a detached barn, a pool, raised sun deck, a boathouse, two car garage, and direct access to that pond. Pretty much the ideal place to spend a summer, right? Sure. Then again, if you're as famous as Barack Obama and have that much money, you might want to have options. And recently, he provided himself with exactly that. Back in 2015, Barack began to think about his eventual retirement. That's when he scooped up three acres of land in the community of Waimanalo on the island of Oahu in Hawaii for $8.7 million. Here's a fun fact about this piece of property. The home that previously sat here was the house featured in Magnum P.I. starring Tom Selleck. That structure was originally constructed in 1933 and was one of the most famous houses in the island. 
But at the time Barack bought the land, it had fallen into disrepair. Rather than salvage the home, Barack demolished the historical property in 2018. For a while after that, the land was left alone. But now, crews are finally getting around to landscaping the grounds, which is usually what occurs towards the end of construction. So it's quite possible that the Obama's Hawaii home will be ready to spend time in as soon as this summer. Only it doesn't appear to be complete quite yet. Back in February 2022, Barack visited the site to scope out how the work was progressing and he didn't look thrilled. Turns out he wasn't the only one. Environmentalists were also unhappy because the Obamas discovered a loophole in Hawaii law that allowed them to keep a seawall on the premises. One that is believed to be perhaps causing erosion to the coastline. Scientists suggest that while seawalls protect what's located behind them, they do the exact opposite to what is in front of them, preventing beaches from migrating inland. And they're one of the main causes of beach loss throughout Hawaii. As for what the Obama home will look like once it's finally completed, well, we're not entirely sure. Though records suggest that there will be three structures located on site, with one of these presumably being for Secret Service. There will also be two swimming pools. All right, everyone, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thank you so much for watching. And before you leave, consider answering the following question. If you used to lead an entire country, would you stick around the capital or get as far away as possible once you were out of office? Let me know if you would have stuck around like Barack did in the comments down below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to make sure that you never miss an episode. My name's Kara the Vampire Slayer. Feel free to follow me on Instagram, and thanks again for joining me. Don't go anywhere yet, because coming up next is our look into the homes of Donald Trump. I'll see you all next time. Bye. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Former President Donald Trump recently broke his silence with his post arraignment speech, which took place at his Mar a Lago residence in Palm Beach, Florida. These were his first public comments made after becoming the first commander in chief in US history to be arraigned on criminal charges. While Trump has been living at his lavish mansion in Florida, the news has been buzzing since he was served almost three dozen charges in a Manhattan court. In March, a Manhattan grand jury voted to indict former President Trump after a years long probe into a 2016 hush money payment to adult star Stormy Daniels. He was then charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Trump's recent speech was made at his current property in Florida where he lives full time and to his supporters, he said, I have a great family and they've done a fantastic job and we appreciate it very much. They've gone through a lot. I have a son here, Don Jr., who has done a great job. Another son here, Eric, who has done a great job and Ivanka. He added referring to three of his four adult children and Baron will be great someday. The former president went on, shouting out his teenage son with his third wife, Melania. He is tall and he is smart. It doesn't appear Melania was spoken about during Trump's speech either, but the pair is still reportedly living together at Mar-a-Lago, which doubles as both the Trump family mansion and an exclusive club. The property is a home base of sorts for the former president. He announced that he was running for president again at the estate last year. Trump teased a third run for office for several months before the announcement. Several of Trump's advisors had reportedly advised him against announcing his intent to run so early, but then in August 2022, the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, searching for classified records that Trump didn't return to the National Archives and Records Administration after his presidential term ended. These are dark times for our nation as my beautiful home is currently under siege, raided, and occupied by a large group of FBI agents, the statement read. Trump remained at Mar-a-Lago Lago for the following months. During Trump's presidency, the exclusive resort was often referred to as the quote unquote winter white house, but now it's just his house. Donald Trump and Melania took up permanent residency at their stunning Mar-a-Lago 
USD in January 2021, located in an exclusive area of Florida's Palm Beach. Considering the property was originally built in the 1920s, it has quite the history as well. The mansion was constructed between 1924 and 1927 for the socialite and post serial heiress Marjorie Merriweather Post, who inherited her father's serial empire when she was 27 after his tragic suicide. Post amassed a fortune of $250 million, which will be equal to about $1.5 billion these days, making her one of the richest women in US history. So, of course, she went all out when it came to her Oceanside mansion. She hired architect Marion Sims, who specialized in Gilded Age and her design to envision her winter retreat on the beach. The 20 acre property offers 128 rooms these days and spans the entire width of the island Palm Beach is on, from the Atlantic Ocean to the intercoastal waterway. The Spanish Moorish style mansion had exterior stone imported from Italy and tens of thousands of antique tiles dating back to the 15th century that came from a castle in Cuba. Many fixtures were gold plated and, in the end, Post's project went eight times over budget, a lot of which was spent on the lavish living room. Here there was a statement ceiling that was a replica of the thousand wing ceiling in Venice and this plus the walls was covered in a ton of gold leaf. Post designed the library in an English Georgian style which offered antique British oak paneled walls. According to Trump's former butler, the shelves here were lined with super rare first edition books which actually received no appreciation from the Trump family who never once picked any of these books up. Inside Inside Mar-a-Lago spans a whopping 62,500 square feet of space and the rooms are opulent as you might expect. Well, when Post had the mansion constructed, there was a mix of styles throughout. The guest and master bedrooms reach a total of 58 and originally these quarters all had different themes. For example, there was a Dutch bedroom with antique tiles from there, a glass covered Venetian style room, Spanish and Portuguese influenced rooms, and the Louis XIV. 14th master suite. Coincidentally enough, this was also known to be Trump's favorite style himself. After some sneaky bartering, Donald Trump scored the Mar a Lago estate in 1985 from the Post family for the mere price of $8 million, which included the property itself and all of its antique furnishings. He further turned Mar a Lago into a private club in 1995 to help turn a profit from the massive estate, and he promised to carry out a restoration of the property in order to do so. Trump spent millions on the expensive restoration, which included a number of additions to the property. He built a 20,000 square foot ballroom with a rumored $7 million in gold leaf and a Louis XIV style, added two swimming pools, a beauty salon, and a spa, and even spent $100,000 each on four gold plated sinks in the new ballroom. While the mega home went from 118 to 128 rooms and it had all been restored, some of the antique contents were sold off at auctions and replaced with replicas. Some of the things Trump got rid of included the jewel covered marble dining table, an antique Spanish rug, and Venetian glasses that were worth $1,000 a piece. These days Donald and Melania maintain private quarters in a separate area of the Mar-a-Lago mansion and this serves as their primary residence. However, in recent years, Melania is said to have done some updates of her own. In the master suite, which previously boasted the Versailles and Louis XIV style, it said that Melania wanted to expand the space and freshen things up. So she revamped and enlarged the owner's suite, choosing dark woods and white marble accents. She even updated the private quarters with more of a modern aesthetic, which it seems that her husband wasn't the biggest fan of and he actually wanted to remove the wood and marble immediately. Aside from Trump's personal quarters, Mar-a-Lago offers club members access to two dining rooms, a beach club, pool, and spa as well as guest suites. Those who step foot inside can enter through the detailed portico that leads to the main building with plenty of neo-gothic accents throughout. The club's main living room boasts high ceilings and gold plated designs on every wall. Because of its flat terrain and open air access, Trump is even able to fly in his own helicopter if need be. And if the club's multiple beaches just aren't enough, you can relax by the various pools on the property. A few years back, Forbes estimated
estimated the value of Mar-a-Lago estate at around $160 million, having increased greatly over the years thanks to extensive renovations, lavish features, the historic background, and more. While he doesn't live there anymore, of course, we have to mention Donald's infamous Trump Tower residence in New York City. For many years, he had lived in the top three floors of the iconic tower, with his entire residence decorated in a gilded and opulent design, as you probably expect. 66 stories high in his penthouse on 5th Avenue, Trump often enjoys nearly 11,000 sprawling square feet of living space. And at the time when they lived here, his youngest son, Baron, reportedly had a floor all to himself. In the usual Trump fashion, this penthouse was decorated with over-the-top lavish details as well as cathedral ceilings, Corinthian columns, massive sparkling chandeliers, and gold accents throughout. The place just screams luxury, and it was modeled after the Palace of Versailles, not to mention it's a piece of pop culture history being featured on Trump's former show, The Apprentice. Trump took Forbes on a tour during the last presidential election, boasting that the size was about 33,000 square feet, but he over-exaggerated just a little bit. He had an office on the 26th floor in the building, so living and working here was easy. He even had a private elevator to go to and fro. When Trump built the tower in 83, the landmark skyscraper was one of the most recognizable and greatest in the world. When it was completed, it was the tallest glass building in Manhattan at the time, rising over six 600 feet into the city skyline and sitting on less than an acre of land. Visually striking with its glass curtain wall and sawtooth faceting, its bold bronze exterior is a dramatic architectural masterpiece. It's received rave reviews from the New York Times architecture critics. Inside, there was a 100-foot mirrored atrium, a 7-foot waterfall, marble floors, and much more. These days, it's said that Trump's massive penthouse would be worth an estimated $54 million. Well, since we don't entirely know where Donald Trump will be ending up soon and if he'll even end up in jail, we can just assume he'll be staying at Mar-a-Lago for as long as possible. And who could blame him? That place is a palace. But that's going to bring us to the end of today's house tour. Before we go, answer me this. If you were going to jail and were able to bring one thing along with you inside, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat.